something came to my mind. Whatever you learn about God, you are going to be tested in that area. And it is no coincidence that you have learned what you learned about God. For instance, I have learned things about God. And I contemplate on God as well. But sometimes what happens, and I have no idea how it happens, sometimes when I get tested, for some reason, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes some principles of the Bible that I have learned. I can't remember it during or at that second or for a while while I am being tested. I don't know how that works. How can you have learned something but while you are being tested you forget what you have learned, at least for a particular time period. It may not be for the entire time that you have been tested, but in the beginning, perhaps, you may have forgotten those vital things, principles about God. When someone choose to want to talk to me, <laughs> I pretty much push them to read their Bible. I pretty much push them to pray. That is probably why not too many people choose to speak with me because I am very hard in that. Because we are not going to speak about random things and not involve God in our conversations. I am going to push you to read your Bible and pray often. Because that is all I have. I don't have anything else in this world that really means anything. Well, you may say, well, you have your mom and dad and stuff like I don't have anything important that is worth more than God. Everything else, whatever, it really doesn't matter when you put it in the aspect of going to hell or heaven. God is all I have if you understand what I am trying to say. So I push people. Some people say, well, I read the whole Bible one or two times. The Bible is not an ordinary book. You can't just read it one time. Even if you read the entire thing from front to back, you have to constantly read it. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it does something to your spirit when you continue to read it over and over and over again. And what I find no matter how many times you read it, you are going to learn something new. Sometimes when I read with other people, I read in certain areas over and over and over and over again, the same place, and I continue, no matter how many times I read in that area, I continue to learn something new. I would think after reading and contemplating on this for so long that I should know everything there is 
when I am reading in that area. No, I am learning something new just about every time I read it. What you learn, you are going to be tested with it. So let's say that you learn about faith and stuff like that. Guess what? You are going to be tested in your faith. Let's say that you learn some more things about God and some other things. Guess what? You are going to be tested in those areas. Sometimes we may go to church or listen to YouTube videos and stuff like that. And we, we may learn something and it may open our eyes. But what happens, the enemy, demons, come into our minds somehow and in so many words, take out what we have learned. So listening to a teaching one or two times, that is not good enough. Doing something every so often, that is not good enough. You have to continue to do it over and over and over again. Why? Because we have demons fighting against us. Taking out, I don't know how to explain it in the right way, but we have demons somehow messing with our thoughts and somehow taking information. I don't know how, but somehow taking information out of our minds and getting us back to the way that we once was. So we have to continue to do it over and over and over and over again. Even if you have read the Bible 20 times over, you have to continue doing it. This one day, this person was saying some things to me and it really made me feel some type of way, not too well. And I believe I came home and I was reading some scriptures off the more I continued to read, the more it built up my faith and it took out that irritation or whatever that demon within that person. So it defeated what that demon within that person was trying to do to me. Reading the Bible is going to strengthen you. Reading the Bible is going to build up your faith. This one person commented to me and in so many words, this person was saying, you know, Kevin, I fell back into sin, blah, blah, blah. And I have to find a way, some other way, on how to not fall into sin. What other way are you going to go? Are you going to find an earthly solution to conquer your sins? How is that going to work? If you have a spiritual problem, 
how can you do something earthly to conquer that spiritual problem? It would make much more sense to do something spiritual to defeat something spiritual. When a demon attacks you in some type of way, why are you going to try something earthly to defeat a demon? A demon is a supernatural being. What earthly solution can you use to defeat that demon? Think about that, man. If I want to defeat a demon, guess what? I am going to do some things that are spiritual. As what? Pray? Okay. Read my Bible? And I may even have to fast where I am not eating or drinking anything. Trying to find an earthly solution is not going to work. I was talking to this one lady, one lady a while back, and um, she was telling me to avoid doing something wrong or this one thing wrong. What she said to me, she would dance it off. And I was thinking, so you would dance to avoid from doing a certain sin. And I was thinking, how does that work? An earthly solution for something spiritual. Let me tell you something. In the afternoon, I believe, I was watching, I forget what, what I was doing. I believe I was watching a teaching on YouTube. I forget what it was about. I don't know. But, wait a minute. I was watching... I believe this woman, yes, I was watching this testimony about God or something like that. And I was having these weird thoughts come to my mind. Demonic thoughts pushing me to do something wrong. And it was coming on in a very strong way, the crazy thing about that, and I don't know how that happens or how it works, for that time period, for about two or three minutes or so, I could not fully think the way that I think now. It was kind of like I could only focus on those demonic thoughts at that time period. And then while I was fighting those thoughts off, I said, wait a minute, this is not me. This is demons. As soon as my thoughts came back to me, that demon had to leave. It had to leave. We are in a spiritual war. And that feeling that came upon me was so strong to do something wrong. So strong. Something that I have absolutely no interest in. But that feeling came upon me in a very heavy, strong way. I have no idea on how that demon was able to fog up my brain or whatever demonic thing 
it actually done. I have no idea how that happens at sometimes. But all I could think about, even while fighting it off, do this, do this, do this do this and I was constantly like no no like fighting it off no idea I'm like what is going on like why am I feeling this way why is this happening and then after two or three minutes or so my thoughts came back to me wait a minute this is a demon doing this to me and I commanded those demons to leave. Leave now, in the name of Jesus. They had to leave. They have to leave. I don't do earthly things when demons come to me t trying to tell me to do something wrong because it is not going to work. I don't... Some people say that they count to 10 or they go on a walk or they go on a run, dance, they get some ice, they read a book. Earthly solutions. They are not going to work. Listen to me. The reason why you continue to fail or at least some of the reasons because you are doing earthly things when you receive spiritual problems. Don't do that. What age was I back then? Maybe four or five years ago. Let me see. about five years ago, I believe, when I really did not know much things about God. I was the same way. I used to use earthly solutions when I would have demonic problems. <laughs> My Lord, it was torture. It was torture. And after about six months, five years ago now, five years ago, I stayed with God for about six months and I could not take it anymore. And I just, I felt like God was not trying to help me. So I said, well, God, if you are not going to help me, I am just going to I am just going to dive right back into sin again. And that is what I did. I dived right back into sin. It was not God's fault. It was my fault. Why? Because I did not know much about God. I did not research about God as much as I do now. I did not continuously do the things that I am doing now. I really did not pray much. I did not read the Bible much. Pretty much all I did was go to church. Yes, I was learning some things, but obviously not all the things that I needed to know. But my relationship with God was not really there because I did not really seek him as much as I should have. So I was weak. I was a baby, weak Christian back then. And after attack and attack and attack, I did not know my authority as a Christian. For a while, I did not know that you could command demons to leave. I did not know that. 
There were so many things that I did not know. So after about six months, I just got tired of it. And I said pretty much out loud, if you are not going to help me, God, I am going to go right back into sin. And that is what I did. And I went right back into it as hard. I won't say as hard as I can go, but pretty hard. And many bad things happened to me. My Lord. You don't have to go through what I went through. I don't know why people want to go the hard route. I am here sitting down telling you what you can do to bypass all the problems that you are going through now. But you are still willing to go your own route trying to do things in the right way when you know that it does not work. I went down that route already. I did. It does not work. I'm not saying that you got to read your Bible for 10 hours a day and pray 10 hours a day. Well, it would be great if you did, but I am not saying that you have to do that. What I am saying, you have to seek God every day. You have to. It would really feel weird for me, <laughs> very awkward, if I did not seek God every day. It would actually feel like I am doing something wrong. And let me tell you this, and this is no lie, I believe the attacks would increase. Yes. Let me tell you this other story. Two years ago, around this time period, about two years ago, I believe, two years ago, ah, uh, yes, two years ago. Around that time period, I would pray at least one hour a day. And for a while, maybe six months to a year, me and my niece would pray for almost every day for one hour every day. And powerful, powerful stuff, man. Very powerful. Our prayers were getting answered. It was amazing. If you can, pray with other people. Some powerful stuff, man. And not only pray with other people, but be in agreement with other people as well. My Lord. <laughs> so, and then it got to the point where her and I would not pray together. I have no reason why. The thing she told me that she wanted to pray on her own. And I was thinking, you know, there is much more power when we pray as one, but she wanted to do her own thing. Okay. So... I started praying one hour every day, even after me and my niece stopped praying together. And I was praying and praying and praying. And I was a bit discouraged because I would pray for people and with my natural eyes, and not with my faith, with my eyes, it seemed like God was not answering or doing anything 
for the people that I was praying for. So I get really agitated. And I was saying, what is the point of praying every single day when those people are not changing? So let me stop praying and let me do what I do. Watch TV and play video games and stuff like that. And that's what I did. And I was doing that without praying. I forget how long. Three months, four months. And when I was not praying and was not reading the Bible as much, I started to notice these demonic attacks <laughs> was getting really, really aggressive. Like, very aggressive. Well, let me say, the first three months, I was getting demonic attacks, but it was at its usual rate, I guess you can say. On the fourth month, on the last two or three weeks, those attacks were going in hard, man. It was going in hard. And I was like, what is going on? I'm like, I am not in sin. I don't believe I am. I am not doing anything wrong. So what I was doing, I was contemplating, what am I doing wrong? Like, where am I sinning? And after, after the fourth week, I forget, the fourth month, I don't know the exact time periods, but when I stopped praying for the fourth month, that is when something huge or something really bad happened to me because I stopped praying something really bad <laughs> that I am still in after a whole year. <laughs> Let me see. Actually, more than a year because I stopped praying and the supernatural dreams that I was having. I could go on and on and on with the things I saw. <laughs> My Lord. What is your point, Kevin? The reason why I push, if you choose to talk to me, <laughs> let me tell you now, I am going to push you to read the Bible and pray. And if you don't like that, it is best to not try to speak to me. Let me say it again. If you want to speak to me, I am going to push you to read the Bible and pray. So know that, know that. Don't say that I am very strict or very mean. No, we are going to read the Bible and pray. If you don't want to do that, hey, <laughs> Stay gone, you know? <laughs> but many bad things happened because I stopped praying. And I had no idea that not praying can do so much wrong, man. <laughs> so much wrong. Hmm. And I am not saying that I pray three hours every day. Sometimes I do it for two, sometimes one or a half hour. It really depends, but I try to hit at least three hours or more each day. Let me say this. 
prayer is extremely powerful. Some people believe that <clears throat> how much time you pray does not matter. No. If a person is praying for 10 hours a day and another person is praying one hour a day, usually the person who is praying 10 hours a day is going to operate in much more power or that person is going to have God's ear really well. I am telling you, from when I used to pray for an hour a day to what I do now, I could sense, I can sense, and I can tell that I am much more closer to God now. So how much you pray and read the Bible matters. Let me say this too. Sometimes when I read the Bible with people, I can go <laughs> one hour, two hours, three hours, and that's not really a big deal when I read with others. But with some people, <laughs> it drives them crazy or they have no interest in reading the Bible for that long. Everything matters. Am I saying that I read the Bible three hours a day or more? No. But the more you do, the closer you are going to be with God. Well, the best thing to do is to obey God because if you are just reading and praying, reading and praying, and you are out there in sin as much as ever, I don't think you can really get close to God with so much sin in your life. So let me stop here. I pray that everything that I have spoke about makes sense. God bless.